if you feel down and you put yourself around people that are taking drugs, drinking alcohol, doing nothing positive, good luck taking that first step. But everything comes at a cost, right? If you want a six-figure business, there's a cost. But if you want to make that a seven-figure business, there's an even bigger cost. For me, there's a lot of dream selling. There's a lot of, you'll have financial freedom in three months. People are also the problem. They see that headline. They don't ask enough questions. So ask the questions. How many millionaires have you made through your coaching? Te tell me who's a millionaire from Ooh. your coaching. Don't let your job or your business run your life. You run it. <laughs> you run your life, right? You're the boss. Yeah. If you imagine that you was like 85 years old and someone said to you, you can go back to being who you are today and you go to the gym, but that's the only thing you can do. You'd enjoy it more than you, than you ever would, ever. Wow, I mean, mic drop. Hello everyone, uh, I'm here today to talk to you about a multitude of topics on this uh, video audio platform thing we have going on. Now I'm going to introduce one of my co-stars, uh, one of my biggest fans, now obviously he's kind of gone past that stage, is uh, Mr. D. Ludlow, Daniel Ludlow, for those of you who don't know. Now Daniel is, a, is an investor in crypto, mm. <clears throat> what happened to that, uh, <laughs> stocks and shares businesses and I would say at some point maybe cars uh, owns multiple businesses has purchased multiple businesses is purchasing multiple businesses but above all of that stuff you know he's just an absolute fucking GQ model um, as you'll see when the camera switches to him right about now <laughs> thanks Dej um, I'm a bit glad I'm not introducing you really because I'm taking a lot of fashion tips from you these days mm. but um, also, one of our other co-stars this evening, drum roll, we have, oh, we could say we found him because he's here with us. <laughs> God. I know that's the typical, but yeah. still, we're Shaz, aka Shaz, Ahmed, or Shazad, Ahmed, I don't know which way, name you go by these my days. My government name, yeah. But government, well, listen, he baited me out of my government name. <laughs> I was waiting for the middle names, like, you yeah. know, Adam did this to me. So <laughs> anyway, we're here today with Shaz. I would say that Shaz is small business owner, great mortgage advisor. Yeah. Even better networker. Yep. And also great podcast host. Oh, thanks. Thanks. So, Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Steve. Thanks, I'll Daniel. I'll stop there. Amazing. No, very kind. Um, I'm going to now introduce Mr. Gurtej Singh Karapal. Wonderful. AKA Tej Singh, AKA Tej Talks, a multi award, no, multi best selling Amazon author. Juice. Uh, property investor, uh, business buyer, and business mm -hmm. owner. Self-proclaimed fashion icon and fashionista, self-proclaimed. Um, and you know, to be fair, when I first met Tej, he hated people who do what I did, as in mortgage broking. He was resentful. Why do I have to use these people? But I think we've kind of um, gone to tolerate each other, Tej. We've turned over many leaves since then. Yeah. Most of the times with a nice kebab on it. Annoyed a lot of people. But yes, we have. <laughs> you annoy more people than me, to be fair. You're quite outspoken, yeah. I think, on social media. And D, you're just outspoken behind social media. But everyone knows that you have big opinions. So we'll, we'll learn about those today, won't we, D? <laughs> Maybe we will. Maybe we will. So there's no agenda, there's no script, but I've got some questions that the public have asked. No agenda? But we're on like the internet. We have to have some sort of agenda. Huh? Money. Make money. Money. Um, yeah, fine. Happy so days. I've got some questions or topics that people have suggested. Too many to go through today. But the first one, let's start off with from The Investor's Diary. Thank you for sending this in. She wants us to talk about the property investment education. And I'm going to just say also the wealth creation market. In education? Yes. Do you want to go first? Or? You can go first. Okay, listen, 99% of you lot are dickheads, yeah, who are God. teaching in property education. And I would say maybe 50%, I'd love your opinions on this, maybe 50% have actually done what they're teaching. So 50% have kind of done it and then they still teach and sell dreams and are dickheads. And the other 49% haven't done it, so are even bigger dickheads. And there's 1% who I think you can see, and we might know personally, and you know you can track them online, which is not always you know sort of um, black and white or easy to see, and they're actually doing it. So for me, there's a lot of dream selling, there's a lot of you'll have financial freedom in three months, deal source one deal and you're financially free. And, but also, I would also say that society, a lot of us are dickheads because we believe it. We see mm. the Facebook ad, oh yeah, you'll do this, you'll do this. And we think, well, I, you know, that's the only person I've ever seen in my life doing property. So I believe them because mm. everyone around me is, I don't know, a recruitment consultant like me. Yeah. So <clears throat> I get it. Society, trainers, who do we blame? It's a bit of a chicken and egg for me. I think everyone's a bit guilty. Wow. I mean, mic drop. That's just um, my politically correct answer. Well, politically correct. Okay, fine. D, what do you think? Um, 
Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with what I said. <laughs> um, the, the, I think the thing is, is, it's not so much that even some of the things people teach, I think that it's not that they're teaching it wrong because people can simplify it in different ways. It's pretty much m almost all the same stuff, but taught differently. And I think that it does make a difference to the person teaching you because, you know, some people aren't very good at teaching people how to do it, but they can do it, right? So I think that's the main thing. But also, it's, I think just being honest, things take time. Yep. Um, I think especially with property, it's like, it's not, it does, things doesn't happen very quick. And at the end of the day, that's just is what it is. Like it, you, there are ways to do things a lot quicker than others. But I think a lot of people turn to the education side is mainly because it does take long. So if someone pays someone 6K or whatever people, I don't know what people are charging these days, but let's say six grand or whatever, how many buy to lets does somebody need? And when it comes to how many, if, if it's buy to lets people choose or HMOs, whatever it is, it does take, it does take a long time and a lot of work goes into it. Mm. And I feel that it, it isn't some part, maybe people are, are still qualified to teach them, they know how to do it. But I would say that find someone who you like listening to, you feel can teach you, but also has done it. Yeah, over and like, over again. That's very politically correct as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I would say same sort of uh, tone we have here. <laughs> yeah. uh, my thoughts on, on this, I think one thing I've noticed definitely uh, whilst I've been in the business is the bigger companies like the PPNs and the PINs, they're just dead. Like there's <coughs> no, none of that going on anymore because they're boring and the, the scale just isn't manageable. Um, but then what that's led to is a lot of newbies who've been investing or rent to renting for eight months, nine months, mm. suddenly doing courses and coaching and mentoring. And that's just not long enough for you to, to have, you know, experience that you need to actually make other people rich. No, but what if you have like 350,000 pounds in the bank account after a few rent to rent and you put it on your like reels and stuff, surely, like I want to learn from them, no? Absolutely, and this is like mm. you said, people are also the problem. They see that mm. headline, they don't ask enough questions. So ask the questions, how many millionaires have you made through your coaching? Te you know, tell me who's a millionaire from Ooh. your coaching. Um, and you know what, I know, I know we talk about it, him, maybe sometimes Samuel Leeds, for example. Actually, a lot of investors, if you trace back, have gone on, on that one day course. Maybe not learned from him, but he's birthed a lot of millionaires. So is he a good coach suddenly or not? Like it depends like how you learn. Just big yeah, time. absolutely killing villages <laughs> altogether. Um, so yeah, pick who you learn from, like Dee said, but do your due diligence, like who, uh, who are your success stories? Or is the coaching platform just for your ego and based all around you? Because that's something I've seen a lot of as well. So a lot of self-proclaimed stuff out there right now. A lot of I am the best, I do this, I do the most. Great, but show me the results from your people you're teaching, not your results. Hmm. I agree. That's, that's, that's what stuff. makes a good trainer though. I think someone who results. gets other people, result, someone who can put other people on the scoreboard. Alex Hormozzi says, uh, Alex Hormozzi says, who's, who's, oh, oh I our know. Our favorite yeah. Alex Hormozzi. <laughs> seen him on the way here. Yeah, the <laughs> Wisdom podcast. He's so yeah. good. Oh yeah, he is. But what he says is like, a good coach should actually be happy, elated when one of their mentees does better than them. The yeah. point is they should reach that stage they're at much quicker because what's the point otherwise? So there you go. So how many of your mentees are smashing it? I know IO's killing it. I would they? say about, so I only have about six at the moment. Yeah. And I would say one, I keep cussing every week for not doing what he should be doing. Yeah. Um, IO is absolutely killing you as broker. So yep. you'd verify he's killing Ayush it. is doing really well as Ayush well. Ayush is doing really well. Short lease thing, deal he's going through at the moment. Um, another guy called Aaron's doing really well. He's starting out, but for me at this stage when they're starting out what doing well means is it may not be publicly something i talk about but if you're hitting your kpis every week and you're doing what i say you need to do every week then in x many months you will be there and x is a very big number it's not three or four months so yeah but i was probably the the poster mentee yeah. who's killing it and, and he follows he follows everything you do step by step i know literally this. Every, <laughs> like, like yeah literally every, just do the work do the yeah. work and he's he's raised finance for his first deal second deal he's raised so much money i don't even think he realizes for all his first deals, he's put in very little himself. He's found these crazy deals with all sorts of issues that we can fix yeah. that other people run away from. So yeah, he's killing it, I love it. And just on this topic, the other thing I would also like to add is um, if you're looking at these courses or mentorship groups and it's like an inner circle, for example, but there's like 50 people on it, that's a massive circle. Like you're not gonna get any attention or care. So if you want an intimate group, make sure it's an intimate group. And some people may not want that, right? So they may not want it, it depends yeah. how you learn, right? Hmm. Dee, you said you had some topics you wanted to. So, yeah, that's all <laughs> Oh dear. Here goes. <clears throat> Have a sip. Yeah, I better get my neck stretched out for this one. I think a good topic would be the education system. Oh, okay. And where is that at the moment? Interesting. Um, so, yeah, so obviously technology 
is growing rapidly. There's an exponential growth. Mm -hmm. um, things are changing. There's a lot of people worried about AI and everything that's, um, yeah, so everything's that's a buzzword. There's a lot of buzzwords at the moment. So I think that if you go to talk about what you two feel, um, maybe do we need to change the education system to kind of stay the same? Are people learning stuff now and taking courses in university now that they may not get a career out of? Are they going to have to be agile? What's your thoughts? So I think um, even even now in 2023, the subjects up to like high school level are still not relevant and practical in day to day lives. So maths, you know, trigonometry, Pythagoras, and all that stuff, you don't use it day to day. I get it. Foundationally, maths is important, but it's what kind of maths do you need to know? Mm. Same as all the other subjects. But then I know there are drop-in classes and sessions and things slightly outside the curriculum, like coding and things like that they do try and mm. teach. But if anything, coding should be more more ingrained in the system because it's more, way more useful in the real world, right? Mm. Um, not that we have to get into this, but RSE, like sex education for kids, preteen kids, it's being forced slightly upon kids, especially in Wales. Mm. I know you're in England, we're in Wales. So that is worrying. Again, the parents are getting less control and the kids are just being told all these things we, before they should. But um, yeah, I think there's a lot of, even now it is, it's interesting that the practical skills people need to live, how to buy a house, you know, how does the economy work? Mm. Um, crypto, for example, because like, that's, that's, crypto is real, it's going to be real in the future, right? So how does that work? Just don't get taught. Mm. I hope it's going to be real in the future because my kid's uh, <laughs> college fund is in crypto, isn't it, D? Yeah. They don't need to go to college. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I agree with that. You're quitting generational wealth, they don't need college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, generational poverty. So, um, uh, you two have younger kids, so I hear mm. about the sex education stuff and what's being taught in your schools, and like, I think it's madness, like the stuff that they're learning at that age. So I can't really speak to that. But as they say in American podcasts, what I will speak to <laughs> is uh, in the education that I remember. And even if they don't change the subjects massively, like maths, you know, why are we learning about apples and whatever till we're like 15? Why isn't it? There's a business and it has 12 staff or and it has half a mil turnover and how do you work out net profit because you know when we buy businesses we're doing maths yeah. maths yeah we're just doing it in a business when we buy property we're doing maths in it so even if they just made the simple change of changing the examples which i don't know how the curriculum works i don't know if teachers can do that without it being a whole big thing but i think that would be a lot more useful budgeting is maths budgeting is not difficult yet you know the statistics around savings and what people earn and have is atrocious right mm. Hormozy said today <laughs> that uh, I think it was half of the US has a negative uh, net worth half wow. wow so when you look at things like that you think getting a spreadsheet up and in a couple of hours you could teach kids how to budget like you could yeah I think there needs to be even if it's not a massive change there needs to be some changes in examples which would lead to massive changes in the future mm. Interesting. Yeah, I think so. I think what would be good, I think is, I think it's Australia. There's a, there's a country um, that for sport, they put children through this like test that tests them in different parts of sport, like the, how agile they are, how fast they are. And then I think they allocate them a few sports they think they're good at, and then they try and push them in it. So I think if they could create some sort of test quite young, where they see what you're good at and where you would thrive, what would be good is if they like, right, these are two subjects you have to do, mm. and then you can pick one that you want to do because you enjoy it. And, and what, what, you, what would happen usually over time, the things you're good at, you enjoy more anyway, because everyone likes to win. So I think that the two things that they're good at, if they, if they continue to be good at that, that, those things, they're gonna start enjoying them more anyway. So I think that would be good if they could do that earlier on. And I do think that even some of the stuff that you don't think is useful, like when I was in school, I used to think, why am I learning algebra? I was, even though I used to like maths, I used to think, why am I learning this? Mm. But I think that it's important though to understand that a lot of the time, I don't think that we're learning stuff that you think thinks not useful because a lot of that's just discipline. So yeah. I think that you're learning how to retain information and then demonstrate competence that I think you need because a lot of people are really good in the exam room and then when it comes to real life, they find it hard because their skill set maybe isn't demonstrating the competence and actually doing it, but they can retain the information and then recite it and pass exams. So I think that a lot of the stuff people think they don't need to learn, still learn it because you're showing yourself that you're learning things you don't really want to do and it don't interest you, but you retain information, you pass and test. But I do feel that obviously the education system personally, I think is 
been flawed for a long time and some of the stuff that you two mentioned definitely needs changing yeah. like rse i i don't even want to talk too much about it's, that because yeah. it's, it's yeah. i think that they've gone way too far with that but also on the flip side a lot of stuff like the budgeting there's a lot of real life stuff that they could yeah they could make things fun but yeah yeah so for, i mean as an example i reached out to my old high school to say can, can i come into the, the school and just deliver a drop-in session on mortgages how to buy a house what the process is and i've been going back and forth for four months they can't find the time they can't find the the need for it and stuff four i'm like guys then. like do you know what I mean? oh well i'm saying four yeah. months yeah. Yeah. for what back and forth so you know what's funny so i did a talk in my old yes. high school yeah. um luckily it was with the te the only teacher i really liked and got on with <laughs> at the time but like he he was my PE teacher he's now deputy head so it was you know i messaged him on facebook and I said can i come in and speak um now I, I prepped like an hour presentation mm -hmm. and the night before I, had a, I was my phone was going off on messenger he said are you still on for tomorrow so i was like yeah of course and he said uh i said look how long have i got he said oh like 15 minutes okay mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for some invaluable information as well like. so i was like whoa i was That's like i chopped this down <laughs> like a lot so i was like just give me 20 and I'll go through it. And what I found interesting, and I'm not saying that they do right things right or wrong, because you know a lot of people are told what to do. Um, just before I spoke, it was to the year 11, it was like about 200 kids. And the head of year came in and said, went crazy, a little bit crazy, and was like, oh, a lot of you haven't filled in your college forms. You have to get them in. You know, And I'm like, I sort of thought, I don't know the process, right? But I thought, is that like be a bit forceful? Like maybe some of these don't want to go to college. And yeah. I actually asked them, I had four things on one of my slides and said, you know, do you, do you want to, you're going to, hands up if you want to get a trade, hands up if you want to do further education, hands up if you want to start your own business. And then also hands up if you want to do something social media related, which sort of comes under own business mm. and um, further education could as well. Um, I thought more would pick social media, but hardly anyone did almost everyone was for further education mm -hmm. and there's about three people that said their own business so i thought that was interesting to see that it is hard though to choose at that age like you know what, what do i want to be forever mm. and like Still we just know, yeah. yeah and like <laughs> you retired three times right? <laughs> you're, well, trying, yeah. you're uh, trying to be Ted. <laughs> yeah but also i think that because of the way like our, our parents generation could find something and then have a career in it yeah like it's very hard now to find something through, through further, further, further education that you potentially, there's not a lot of things you can have a full career out of yeah. in one sort of job role, you know, if you wanted to go down the employment route. So I think that you do have to be more agile and it is hard to put that sort of pressure on a, be like, what do you want to do? Pick whatever it is now where I think it should be more like, look, you don't know yet. Try a few things, see what you like. It doesn't matter if you don't know what you want to be by 18 years old. Yeah, You may not know till you're 30 or 35. Mm -hmm. Just... Don't be scared to go out there and try different things. Try it, especially when you're younger. Try, try as much as you can. Mm. I think quick one on that. Employers yeah. need to do better in terms mm. of their requirements because I was speaking to a friend of mine. He works, I think he works for a PE firm actually, or some firm that buy assets. And he was, he does accountancy something, something. He wants to get into the property side. And I said, so, so what are you waiting for? But I've known you for how many years? <laughs> And um, he said, oh, I was like, so why don't you learn it? I'll give you access to my courses. Just just learn it and, and just do it. And he goes, nah, they want me to have a master's. After his degree, after his accounts exams, I said, to learn what? He goes, the stuff you put on your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to do a year yeah. and do exams and do all this bollocks to learn what I could teach you in three hours. Yeah. Or you could pay someone a couple of grand. And he goes, yes. I said, I can do your job already and I haven't got any of this shit. You can do the, like, and so employers, unless you're a doctor where you need certain things and qualifications, I think they need to be a bit better and a bit more like, we don't need a master's. Mm. We just need you to know this. So go learn it, show us, and then you're in. Yeah. I don't want to waste a year of your, I want you doing it now. I don't want you in a year. Yeah. So I employers need to work on it. What you mentioned earlier about property investment though, and then on to this, to merge them both together. I think that's why like the peer-to-peer -peer education is essential, but it needs to be some yeah. sort of vetting process. Like you mentioned, we don't know who's good and who isn't. There's some people that may not have done amazing at what they're teaching, but they're really good at teaching it. And I, you see that with the old property, property companies. And yeah. now I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, but some people, if they can deliver it, and someone else becomes good off it, fair enough. But I feel that a lot of people now are more open to coming out of school and paying someone they feel, I want to look like this person, I want to do what this person does or what they've achieved. And they're more open to paying them now than they would have been five or 10 years ago. I feel that five or 10 years ago, 
unless it was a big company, Rich Dad Education or something, people wouldn't trust the brand. Yeah. Whereas now people have an opportunity to see someone's personal brand, follow them for a long time, and then be like, I like this person. They sound like this, this I see some validation from people they work with. And, and then if they like them, then they can choose. I don't mind paying them to fast track their education side if they believe they can get a value from them. That makes complete sense. No, I mm. agree with all of that. Uh, the next point, just to go back on the questions, is from property underscore Martin. Oh, you're, okay. you're speaking at the event, aren't I'm you? I'm speaking at his event. Are you coming? I'm not here. Can you get him plus one? Oh, I'm you, not here. You're I'm in not here. Oh, so I was going to get you in if you need to be, but no, it's cool. Don't worry. Next so time. Next time. time I'm Martin right. Harvey, thank you for the question. He's asked the five most important important points to structure a new business. I mean, look, it'd have to be five. It could be one or two, but go, do, do you want to go for that first? Okay, sure. Put me on a spot. No worries. Um, have your back office sorted out, whether it's accounting, whether it's mm -hmm. just BS admin, get it outsourced, yep. give it to someone you don't like or whatever, you don't like doing the work. Get that sorted. Social media, branding, visibility, super important. Get that set up. Website, which is similar to that, but I think get that set up, very easy to do. Um, if you're going to hire staff, having a recruitment process, an interview process, uh, uh, maintaining, keeping the culture, keeping them in the company, a firing process, a getting rid of process, all of that kind of lockdown and a HR process, you can outsource it for cheap pretty much. And then one of the last things I think to get set up is you need to think about the balance of new business, existing business, and how you're gonna keep going to get new clients, but also manage the clients that you're winning and how you're gonna keep them. Um, one thing, just to touch on what you said there, you mentioned outsourcing a lot. One thing you didn't mention outsourcing was recruitment. Is that something deliberate? Would you want to recruit yourself? So you can pay me five thousand pounds on a fifty k roll, and I'll recruit for you as well. Exciting, no, but would you outsource? Sorry, it? agenda. That was the agenda coming through. Yeah, uh, I would outsource it if you're not a people person. Like I'm not, for example. Yeah, depending on the role, though. <laughs> okay. Like I'm recruiting cleaners at the moment, and would I pay a recruitment agency to find a permanent cleaner? No. Would I pay them to find a software developer? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Do you, any anything to add on that? Um, there's probably it depends if you've, you've bought a business or you're starting one i think that if let's just start a business, business in general yeah. i think that you need first and foremost you need marketing and then more well, sales and marketing together yeah. um because without marketing no one's got a job because if you don't have any marketing and no one knows who you are no one's going to buy from you alex or mosey says <laughs> <laughs> so i think sales and marketing first and foremost second's going to be finance because if you don't have a grip on finance then again it doesn't matter how many sales you make you're not going to know what to do with the money and then operations i think so if your sales are marketing finance and operations i think if you can get a lot of things come off there it's like a spider's web but if you can get those three or if you want to put sales and marketing separate four together i think that's the most important but yeah when you're starting off all the other stuff that comes with it like tez said like branding's key you know a lot of the stuff you said but if you just want to pull them into those three things first perfect thank you um right i'll start with this one so d tuck i imagine dale tucker d tuck 94 says wait a d tuck you just pulled that person dale. Name them dale like. i imagine it's dale why 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 did you pick dale because <laughs> daniel because daniels tend to call themselves daniel <laughs> what, david david dennis don dennis donald dominic donald Okay, anyway, Derek. Dietuck, sorry for assuming your name, Dietuck. <coughs> Mental health challenges when becoming an entrepreneur. Now, I'll just start on this. I think, first of all, it's not just entrepreneurs who have mental health challenges. You could be struggling whilst you're in a nine to five. Secondly, um, I think you just, if you want something bad enough, then of course there will be struggle, as in you will have long hours that you're working or you will sacrifice certain things in your life. It doesn't mean you've got mental health issues, not to discredit it. Um, but everything comes at a cost, right? So if you want a six-figure business, there's a cost. If, but if you want to make that a seven-figure business, an even bigger cost. Once you get there, to maintain it, it's an even bigger cost. So there's just sacrifices you have to make. Now, I've spoken about this before on different podcasts around burnout. If you think, I think you can tell when you're getting burnt out. You can see it happening. You can kind of see things around you. I've, I've had it to myself. But then it's a choice. Do you carry on because what you want is, is important enough or do you slow down? because you value you know, your mental health enough. Those are just my thoughts. Who wants to take it from there? If you pulled the arrow back, you... Um, yeah, so, <laughs> like, it's not gonna be easy. You know, when you're building something, yeah. like, for people, to, anyone to think they're gonna go into it and not feel stressed building, that's just not gonna happen. Yeah. So, yeah, if, you, if you're not willing to go through a stressful period, where well, I do feel that that's when you grow the most, 
you know you can go as cheesy as you want and the pressure and they say like pressure on a diamond and all that but the truth is you grow the most when you when you push yourself so you're not going to get what you want without going through some tough times yeah so the w thing i think uh, this probably leads to like mo keeping motivated right mm -hmm. now we can start off i think first and foremost that's the difference between discipline and motivation yep. like you if you struggle with motivation then find something that does motivate you if you want short-term motivation i don't think it's a bad thing like if you have to listen to affirmations or tony robbins giving you motivation and, and that does get you going and do it it's not saying that you can't now because you're not very disciplined you can't do well or grow something find the thing that motivates you if you have to do it every single day but the truth is you have to show up on the days you don't want to end off now one thing that i find helps and i hope this may help some people is let's use like the gym for instance right mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle i know you don't <coughs> i know you're saying that because i'm sitting yeah the yeah, in yeah. Tricep, <laughs> but yeah. i feel that people struggle to get motivated to go to the gym because some people don't enjoy the actual gym and sitting there lifting weights or whatever but i think if you imagine that you was like 85 years old and you weren't agile no more you couldn't move mm. as well your mind isn't really where it was at before and you sat there and you could have hip issues or anything and someone said to you you can go back to being who you are today mm -hmm. as mobile and as agile and as strong as you are today and you go to the gym but that's the only thing you can do probably the best gym session you've ever gonna <laughs> yeah. have because you can enjoy it because you, you you're now gone from you can't move to you can do all these different things you can do pull-ups and everything you'd enjoy it more than you, than you ever would ever yeah. so if you think about that with everything that you do that one day you are going to be sat there you know what i mean you're going to be old yeah and you're going to wish that you did come back to today i think that that's sh if that doesn't motivate you then i don't think that this path to entrepreneurship is for you yeah because it's not yeah, easy yeah. no i love it and, and, and yourself i think d skirted around mental health there and went to the more top levels of mental health but i'm mm. um, that's just my feedback d live <laughs> okay live. Right, uh, let me let me let me let me, <laughs> oh, uh, let me drill feel, down on I this feel right. like you've oh, got God. something there you know no nah. <laughs> It may not look. Maybe that's your view on it. Is that level? Yeah. No, no, but and that's how you experience it, right? Everyone's different. But what is like? Look, what is mental health in the sense of? Is it you just feeling stressed, tired all the time? That's just what is physical health. It's how your body feels, your body moves, your body is, your skin. Your, so if you're overweight, you know, for example, you feel lethargic, you can't. That's physical health. Yeah. But there's also mental health, I suppose, that comes with being overweight. And yeah. mental health that can make you overweight, or mental health that can come from, like for me, it's just inextricably, is that the word, linked with physical health, really? and biologically it is as well. Like you know, they say our gut is our second brain. How does yeah. that make sense? It's it's eating the food. It's not, a, but it is your second brain in terms of the number of neurons and the control it has back up to the brain, not just back down to it. So, you know, the, the specific question was about entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what you both said is absolutely correct just to be really specific for my challenges one is uncertainty mm -hmm. which you know i think can cause i don't really get anxious much but <clears throat> if anything is going to cause anxiety it's going to be uncertainty of like is the deal happening is it not have i spent seven hours for it not to come through you know we're doing this is that going to come there's all and i suppose when you have a property portfolio i don't feel this but there is a level of uncertainty every month like are these is the rent getting paid yeah. like there's and it, it, as an entrepreneur, if your second biggest client says, mm, you know what, I don't like you as my broker, I'm gonna go see that Shaz guy, your business could collapse and your mortgage and your bit. And so I think, you know, having a business, you need to have a very strong mental health. You need to, doesn't mean that it's not gonna weaken it. Doesn't mean that you can't improve it, but you need to have that grit and the determination that Dee touched on there to kind of get through those moments. But for me, uncertainty, I think being lonely if you work from home alone, you don't have friends who are in the same like business as you or sector or even just entrepreneurs, which a lot of people won't, right? Mm -hmm. You've worked in the city for 10 years. Who are your friends? City boys, isn't it? Yeah. So, well, city girls. So when you leave that, you look around you and think, I can't talk to these fuckers, can I? Mm. And so that can cause issues, you know, mentally. But I think it can all be solved with exercise, with therapy, with eating well, with having a good, you know what I mean? There's, I think for most problems, there is a solution. So basically, yeah, because everything you said there is stuff that you can control, yes. mm. right? So now I know sometimes if someone's really, really low, and I think that if you're talking about entrepreneurship, I actually think that the lows are lower than the highs because the highs are all, I feel there's always very underwhelming when you get what you want. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. the chase is always better than the kill. So all this build up to the thing you want, the chase you 
you don't really enjoy it at the time because you're like, ah, oh, because the uncertainty you talked about, mm -hmm. you get what you want. It never feels as good as you thought it did. <laughs> And it's never, yeah, so yeah. like the lows, they'll feel a lot lower than the highs. And that's the truth because like when something doesn't go right that you wanted it to go right, all that optimism and like hopium you had, all of a sudden, <laughs> like the truth is it doesn't, it feels worse because you're like, I actually thought that was going to work. Yeah. So I think that because it's controllable, I think that if you ask yourself and the hardest part is to start and I understand that starting it for some people feels like that's impossible because when people are really, really low, Fortunately, I've never gone through like like a real depressive state, really. Um, I've had low times, but you have to pick yourself out of them. But never like, a, I don't think a depressive state, maybe, maybe not. But the hardest part is to start. So when I felt low, it does, you don't feel like you want to start. But if you look at it like fundamentally and we said, right, if you woke up fresh, bright and early, you had a good night's sleep every single night, you, if you want to eat breakfast, you eat a good breakfast and healthy. You go to the gym. Sorry, Adam Rana here hunts for his breakfast. I just want to put that on there. <laughs> That's why, I've yeah. got an image of him yeah. in like Tarzan with his pecs out. <laughs> so, with, yeah. with his spear. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you did though, and you, you ate clean every single day, you went to the gym, you, you had, say, cold shower, stuff that is proven and factual to make you feel better and boost dopamine. If you do all the things that boost dopamine, it is going to be very hard for you to feel depressed. So I think that it's easy to sit there, I know, and say like, look, if you just do all these things, you're not gonna feel yeah. down. And But the hardest part is to start. But again, you gotta help yourself. Like if you should put yourself around people that make you feel good, because environment's gonna be the first yeah. thing to make you take that first step. Put yourself around people that are motivated. If you feel down and you put yourself around people that are taking drugs, drinking alcohol, doing nothing positive, good luck taking that first step. Mm. You have to help yourself to take the first step and then you'll be surprised how much help is around you. Everyone wants, crazy enough, no matter how selfish someone is, I think as humans and in human nature, if we can help someone that wants to help themselves, we will. Almost yes. everyone will yep. do it. Mm -hmm. It feels good to do it. Yep. So if, if, someone said, if someone showed me that they're not in a good way and they take the first step and they're willing to listen and they're teachable and want help, I'd probably give them more time than I should. Mm -hmm. I know you will, yeah. yeah. You definitely will. So, yeah, that's my two pence. If they can, the key thing you said was if they want to help themselves. Yeah. You can take a horse to water. Yeah. You can't make it drink, can't dip its long head. But sometimes in you do need to give people a chance. So, as much as like, like, you probably think, nah, D's more savage than this, right? Because I, because I, I do believe. And I know you're not, though. You're so giving and so like, you, are, you know. It's nice. Yeah, but yeah. Do, do you know what it is, right? I do believe everyone wants to be a savage until it's time to be a savage, right? That's the mm, truth. I like when it comes to it. I, quite like, I like being a savage. Well, I'm saying no, but almost everyone, if you speak to them, they're like, "I want to be a." Or a lot of people that think they're a savage, they find out when it comes that they're not. Right? You you do have to show up. You have to be one. Right? And I think that. that but I do feel there's some people that may not want to show that little bit of like, "I'm going to take the first step." But if with the right person mm. to show them to that water that you said they would do it. But sometimes you have to put a little bit more into some than others. And I do believe some people should have the chance you never know what they end up being if they yeah. did have the help. But at the same time, if you do it and you do it again, and then they just, there's literally yeah. all talk. At some point you gotta be like, like you, you gotta do this yourself and come back when you're ready. Savage. Savage. Sa that's gonna be your nickname, D Savage Look Low. <laughs> do you know what it is? Sorry, Go on. it's because Dana White, you see that interview with Dana White? He Which says, one? I've told my kids, he said, in this new generation, if you're even remotely a savage, he goes, you're going to run all over these. <laughs> Love it. But Love it's it. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Of course it is. Man, man like Dana. Um, <laughs> yeah, say it off, Mike. So, <laughs> zim.ox, which is uh, Mortgage Brokers Ama. Yeah. Oh, what did I say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You met her. I yeah, yeah. Met her yeah, well. yeah. And I'm, so, I'm she then. just put three words work life balance. Oh, fuck. I know, I know. Mm. Listen, I don't. Uh, the, the cheesy answer is there is no balance. If you love what you do, you'll you know you never, never work balance. a day in your life. Absolutely, but I think um, like I, I consider that I think I work all the time. This you do, is yeah. This is respond. work, but this is also part Wait, of life. You can't, can't this is work. I can't. This is work, but also life. Like can't I'm, I'm with my buddies chilling. and I'm chilling. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I ain't making money. But it's a case of you've got to make your work enjoyable, especially if it's a business thing. If it's your business and you enjoy it then it shouldn't feel like hard work. Obviously, there's hard things dealing with staff, dealing with suppliers, bills, everything, right? But Alex Almosi says, unfortunately, he says something like, when we'll talk about work-life balance, that's just having to do things you don't like 
that don't like doing to make the balance of things you do like doing, right? Mm. But if you just do what you enjoy, you don't need to stress about work-life balance. I think people romanticize it a little bit too much that I need to have the balance. I need to you know, spend this much time at home, this much in, in the office, turn my phone off. Just do what gets results. Do you know what I mean? As long as you're happy, you're happy. Yeah. I, so... <laughs> and those, what, two or three sighs in, in a no, few seconds? God, no, he's rolling his eyes at me. No, Joyce, no, the, the reason being, I, I agree with you. I, the, the reason I think this is another buzzword is because if you focus, wherever you give power will have the power, yeah. wherever you direct the power. So if you're going to give power to, I need to find work-life balance, I need to do this, I need to do that, all these things that social media and YouTube or whatever tell you to do and people on there tell you to do, a lot of them are just buzzwords. Mm -hmm. Just don't, don't give it power. If you feel that you're enjoying life, enjoy life absolutely wake up right? and just yeah. enjoy life right yeah if you're not enjoying life then you've got to change something but don't complain but, either way because it's in your control right yeah so like and if you want to start wondering if you're enjoying life or not because you if you're that confused that you don't know then start journaling start writing down the things you ate what time you woke up how much water did you drink did you go to the gym did you not go to the gym what did you do in the day mm. if you felt like you had a good day guess what do more of that if you yeah. didn't have a good day change something on in that system that you put together right and we'll p change those data points but really like like you said yeah people say it's cheesy i'll find something that you like and you'll never not be happy or never, never work a day in your life like if you f try and find balance it's gonna be more of a headache yeah. than just doing the thing that you do yeah just enjoy life because if you ask anyone even if you go to nutritionist and say what's a balanced diet and you ask five they're all going to say different things yeah so what is a balanced diet if we ask the experts, they don't even, no one can tell you. It's not all the same. It's all different, right? So if you consistently try and find balance in your life, you're going to be searching for a very, very long time. So just do what you need to do and just make sure you enjoy it. People say to me, it's one of the most questions I ask more <laughs> anything yeah. by anyone is, well, you've got three kids. You've got this. How, how do you, I don't think about it. I still spend a lot of time with my family. I make sure if I'm not traveling, I take them to school and pick them up every single day. People think, how do you do that? Yeah, because I, I prioritize it because I enjoy doing that. You've got that. your own boundaries within your own... Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy it, right? So, and then I don't feel... Uh, you can tell when you're doing... Like, I have days, obviously, where I'm like, shit, I've taken way too much on. My head's all over the place. Yep. I need to do less of this because this doesn't make me feel good. But at the same time, you do need to understand, you do need to do certain things if you want to grow so yeah I, I just think that just don't give it too much power and just to add on to that and we'll obviously ask you for your thoughts as well Tej work-life balance look when you have a job nine to five job you do 35 hours a week then you have your your life people saying there's balance there suddenly when it's a business they don't have balance so one you if, if that is the issue that you think you know you're working long hours in your business then just do nine to five you know and, and there you've got your balance again like I think people put it too much on a pedestal yeah, I agree. I think my answer is based on the fact that I'm financially free, so I can kind of be a bit more flippant. Just say you're rich. You're wealthy. And, uh, so you're wealthy. And, uh, <laughs> rich. And relaxed. I dress like I'm rich. Um, <laughs> you know, I look at it like this. And I, I was in a um, one of my cleaning clients is like an NHS uh, dialysis unit. Mm. And everyone in there is very old. I would say very unhealthy. May not have caused their liver issues from themselves. But when I walked in, it was super clean. So my cleaners knew, I was like, wow, this actually is really clean. Um, and it was semi-private, so even cleaner. And I, as I was walking around, I, I don't look at people, but like I could see people and the kind of <clears throat> state they were in. And it links to what you said about, you know, if you were that age, would you go back? Well, I look forward and I say, shit, man, right now I can run, walk, jump, punch, mm. kick, lift heavy shit. I can throw, I can do all this stuff that in about, I don't know, 60, 50 years, I'm not gonna be able to do. Mm -hmm. And I know that people around me are going to die. I'm going to die at some point. Mm -hmm. I know that people are going to become unwell. I know that I can always make money and I am making money in the background as I'm sleeping, breathing, everything. So I kind of judge what I do on what you both said, which is, do I enjoy this? Now, I if, if there was to be a balance, mine would be like life and then business because, you know, my day to day decisions and I've been thinking about this, like how I spend money, especially after coming back from that unit, I thought, you know, it's like we're going on holidays this year and I have the choice between, I, lo I love cars, right? So we're driving around California for two weeks. I can either pay, I don't know, one and a half grand for an M4 BMW convertible, yeah? Mm -hmm. Bad boy car. Yeah. I pay 600 for like an X5. Now, that's a stupid decision yeah. to pay. But guess what I'm probably going to do? Get the nice BMW. I'm going to get the nice one. Because I know 
I could be dead in a week. I could die in that car. I could. Yeah. So I always look at it and think, you know what? Like I'm here for enjoyment. Money's to be saved, to be invested for kids, for future, for all. That's great. But really, I look at it and think, I've worked hard to like have a good fucking time in life. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I go shopping, when I go to like groceries, groceries, small things, but it adds up. I'll spend more on expensive ricotta because it tastes better. Whole foods. Whole foods. Yeah. Their croissants are banging, you know. I'll spend more on that because I value it. But then I'll also make decisions like, you know, am I going to come here for two hours with you guys? Even though I'm not making any money from it. I'll probably make some money from it. But dis- little decisions like this, I will always choose the fun. And mm-hmm. as you know, you know, with my after parties, yeah. I will always choose the fun and like having the next day feeling a bit shit over yeah nah nah i could make two grand tomorrow i'll say two grand i'd rather dance for five hours because life is for living yeah i think don't let your job or your business run your life you run it you run your life right you're the boss yeah Yeah. amazing d is there anything you want to talk about or should we go on to the rest of these yeah let's go next one fine so i'm just gonna not say the ones that have been repeated um quite a lot of responses when i put questions out yeah, listen, I've got an engaged audience, unfortunately. <laughs> you have. You're, you're more accessible. You're more relatable, you know? <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always everywhere. Anyway. Okay, someone said... Okay, we'll just talk about this in, in a general point. So, Jasmine has said, some networking events of value. I think let's talk about events in general. Because mm-hmm. I think there's networking events and there's social gathering events and there's education events. Mm, yeah. Um, obviously, you've got your events as part of the 5D. You go to every event and do an after party. I try and get invited to some events. So, what I think again, this has changed the landscape. You need to pray more, brother. Absolutely, mm-hmm. the landscape of events has changed since I've been going. So, mm. PIN, PPN, again, they're just not happening. Like, I don't attend them. There's like one, two, there's two PPNs and like one PIN. I think in the Midlands, there's yeah. Cardiff PIN. So, the numbers just dwindled. Same people, same faces. But sometimes you have to go through that process to come on the other side. And I left be, PPN and it all sort of happened. Uh, maybe it's just coincidence. Maybe. Yeah, Ted used to run a PPN in Knightsbridge. Wasn't I, it? In Knightsbridge, yeah. Yeah, full house every single time. Anyway, so I think with events, um, you need to set your intention and be very intentional about what events you go to, mm. what you're trying to get out of it, but what value can you add to people in the room? I'll give you guys an example. I went to an event that I'd never been to before. It was a business event. Um, Chutney and Chat, actually. So it was a... Uh, an Asian business event, oh, nice. an Asian business owner. And the person I went with, she had a jewelry business, mm. but she also helped people with social media. So every time she was speaking to someone, they're like, oh, what'd you do? Oh yeah, I've got, I sell jewelry. After the fifth time, I was like, listen, you need to start with, I help people with their social media, because that's how you can be valuable to them. Not that you sell jewelry, that's not helpful to anyone, mm. right? So those are my two things, be valuable, be memorable, as opposed to being trying to be clever, be memorable. So if you've got something that's unique about you, bring that to the forefront. Um, you you know me better that I am still quite shy and anxious about new people. Yeah. If I don't if I don't know people, I need to control the environment. Definitely seen like, oh, with some I'm people, like, yeah. I don't speak to you, but end of the day, everyone's in the same boat. No one's better than anyone else. They're all trying to learn or get some sort of value and make connections. Just don't be a, a dickhead. Wow, that's quite contro for him, isn't it? Hey, <laughs> quite contro. The new man. I, I'm a, it's spending half a day with him. I was going to say, with the, the knit jump a little one button undone, <laughs> yeah, might on. be a couple of oh, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Can we move on, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy, Shaz. Yeah, don't be shy. Uh, what's the, the question is. The question is, let's talk about events in general, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, so the, the landscape's changed massively. It used to be stuffy, uh, underground hotel rooms, really. Wh- why do hotels always have really weird, do you shitty, remember smelly cars? The village hotel where you, where you and Ahmed Khan spoke for PPN. The village? There's like 15 people there. And half half of them were me and me him. Yeah, because the hosts, you know who you are, put no effort into getting people to the event. Sean Forsey, uh, Phil Leslie, and uh, Michelle Tyler. It's true. It's factual. <laughs> anyway, it's not slander or like. Shazam, on them. <laughs> <laughs> factually, they are the hosts of Fifi and Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, no, but they they know they didn't put any effort in because when I walked in the room, I was like, what? They relied on for you me and Ahmed, and you know, big boys in the game. I was like. Yeah. By the way, guys, Ahmed Khan is one of the best I mean, speakers in property. I just want to put that out there. He's one, one of, of the one best of the speakers. best. Yeah, but he doesn't. I haven't seen him at like the biggest events. But he has the first time I saw him, I was convinced I was going to be a millionaire with SA. Uh, to be fair, he's, very, he's a very good speaker. Yeah. yeah. And he's oh, just I so. I, there, I can't remember. He's so suave. You might have been. No, I, I was he, there. He I, was, I was there. Yeah, you were there for the branding one, but not the first one. I can't really remember him. Yeah. He's, okay. he, he's a good but speaker. Events, so you've been. Yeah, so I, I would say like it's changed massively um, from that stuffy hotel, you know, basement, green, shitty little seats to like 
Hi, I'm a broker and the mortgage rate is 4%. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm a solicitor and we can do everything. I know you what solicitors do, piss off. You know, I'm this, I do, oh, okay, you're an insurance broker, you do insurance. Fuck me, that's what I took a lot I'm a to deal think sourcer. about. I'm a deal sourcer. What do you do? You fuck everyone <laughs> off and you send shit deals. I know what you all do, like, fuck me. Oh, seriously, these events used to piss me off. And that's why I set up. But the thing was, though, you, the problem with, I think the problem, the issue you had was, because you were so well known, you would be approached a lot more. So but I did it on purpose to make my life easier, yeah. right? So that I didn't have to have small talk and have this sort of shyness that you speak about. We can just go straight into, hey, Tej, I saw you're working on this. Hey, Shaz, I saw you did that deal with that lender. Mm. Like, tell me about it instead of, how are you? How's the yeah. weather? Forget Who all gives that. a shit about the weather? Who gives a Yeah, well, yeah, nowadays. Um, so yeah, I think events have changed massively. Um, you need to go there to give value. Even if you don't think you have value, you know, don't be a total drain. Like, um, hi, Charles. <laughs> can you tell me all the mortgage rates cost all the things for my profile? And then um, can we do a quick fact find? And then can you get a bridge for me at 0.4% a month? And then, like, don't be that. Like, ask questions that are going to get you answers that you want to hear. And especially at an event, it's just not the right place to ask for things like that. So um, what was I going to say, actually, is, um, you know what? I've learned this somewhere is people are always watching, right? Mm. So if you're a newbie and it's an invite only event, for example, let's just, let's just say it's a voice, for example, because their events are the Whole best. Whole types of voice. It's an invite only event. I won't be there. I'm too Bad boy events. Lead. Mkeet Sanj. Yeah. 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 Big up. So it's an invite only event. Yeah. And they're very, they're very gracious. They invite newbies and blah, blah, mm. but, everyone, yeah, yeah. but they still need to know who you are. So if you've got a social media account about your property business or any business that you're running, post on it because it's not to show off or brag or to, to blag them, but unless they know what you do and how you could possibly be valuable in that room, they're not going to invite you, right? Nope. So you don't know who's watching, but people are watching. People are, God is always watching first. I remember when Market first met me uh, at Pin Dennis was a couple of years ago and he was like, Shaz, we love what you've been posting, love your content. And I was just like, oh my God, you watch my content? You listen to what it's <laughs> like. I was yeah. blushing as well, yeah. D, but obviously you run your, you have events, right? So um, These events are amazing as well, everyone. Thank you. You spoke at quite a few actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think that networking, if it's a networking event and there's no speakers, then I just think just, if I was to give anyone a tip, I think Shaz probably the best tips because chief networker, but um, I think just network without arrogance because the one thing that mm. used to really frustrate me, I went to, I think it was Cardiff Pin and they did this thing where everyone stands up and says who you are. Now, fine. We don't need to know how big your portfolio is. We don't need to know the value of your portfolio. Like straight away, that just that just puts me off speaking to someone. I remember one guy stood up. He's like, um, "I got thirty-five HMOs worth X amount, and this isn't." I just thought, like, well, you know, we asked you who you are. Like, we don't need to know, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. for me, I think you should tell people what you do. Like, you know, stand up, say what you do, and whatever. But I just think network without the arrogance. So when people have to drop in all the stuff they have, look. So it's a small world. They're gonna find find you on social yeah. media after. If you was interesting and they believe what you said and you was authentic, guess what? They're gonna see what you do anyway. Did you not have the the issue where you met someone at an event, then you met them on site for like a project management discussion? Wow. And then you asked the question, Hey, just out of interest, how many properties do you have? And just so I know and it was like, Oh, I'm still working on that. So yeah, so <laughs> someone I felt thought was interesting. Yep. I thought was authentic. I'm not saying it wasn't authentic, but they felt like their knowledge was insane on what I needed really. So yeah, I invited them to one of my sites. They give me loads of tips, told me all the things I was doing wrong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I wanted them to come for. Cause you know, I, I wanted to see what, where I could improve. So then we went for some food afterwards and um, I just said, look, you know, how many properties do you have? Which is a, a natural conversation to have, isn't it? Yeah, I thought, how many, do you, how many refibs? <laughs> yeah. The amount of information this person gave me, I'm is like- Is there a CV? You just need yeah, to I was it. like, oh, how many, how many of these have you done? He's like, oh, I, have, I don't have any properties. <laughs> Can you I, imagine his face? Um, I remember when he told me this, yeah. like, oh, cable. <laughs> yeah, I was, it's like, yeah, he was, oh, no, I'm one of those investors that I don't ever pull the trigger. So- <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you're paying for dinner then. Yeah, right? so, so I thought, Straight away, everything, which was annoying because the information he gave me was good. Even looking back, it was still good information. But that moment, I sort of thought, one, I wasted my time today. And two, do I actually believe or should I take on board everything that you've just said? Even though, like, even now, today, looking back, it was good. But I'm like, what do I take from that? Because you're telling me to do all these things and tell me everything I'm doing wrong, but I'm actually doing the thing you're telling me to do and you're not. You're not, yeah. So that frustrated me. But yeah, I think that networking, just be authentic because look, it's, at the end of the day, they are. If, if they did find you interesting, they are going to look at you afterwards, right? 
you're going to share social media but just network without arrogance be yourself results will always show anyway yeah. and yeah just to build on what Dee said so my my thing about networking I always look at three touch points um, one is physical networking so in a networking event or a room second is online networking which is in the DMs privately guys if you DM someone make it quite personal make it you know make it memorable or make it saucy for sure make sure you've done the research for God's sake so hey Ted I just saw you bought a cleaning business that's so interesting what are you doing right now like don't mm. just be like hey how are you doing no one, no one cares right so networking DMs and then also posting on social media branding Keep doing that, and it just all goes by full circle. When you meet someone, they've seen you online, you spoke to them online, blah, 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 blah. I was trying to touch on, again, based on that scenario, and we've kind of mentioned it before, I see a lot of right now is misdirection on social media. Mm. It did stop for a while. I don't know why it stopped, but it's back again. As things like, for example, deal sources, picture keys, our 13th project. No, it's the 13th one you've sourced on for a client. Or um, a rent to SA operators, million uh, you know two million pound portfolio well no it's you don't own any of it you yeah ain't yours put, bro you know now i understand you can't put every single word on your instagram bio you've got 64 letters or whatever but i feel a lot of it's deliberate if i'm honest to, to show credibility how do people safeguard themselves and who's to blame quick question to you you know pe firms this is related to this okay. when they have assets under management that means that they don't own the assets they're looking after them so if i give them a billion they've got a billion under management is that technically how it works well technically because they don't Depends it, on what their business model is. It's like a management is. fee. Yes, yeah, so they take a management fee, management fee, but it depends what their business model is because yeah. some of them may own, out of a billion assets in the management, they may actually physically own 60% mm. of it. I see what you're saying. Potentially, because obviously they're going to also take some debt capital, which you could say, oh, they own the whole thing because this is what property is like. Yeah, like, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I got 70 million pounds worth of property and all this stuff. But, so it really depends, but... To what you said about first of all I, 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 you, a tip that you said before I thought was good just to quickly wrap yeah. up on networking was um, you said that before an event if you don't know somebody but you know they go free networking I like that I thought that was a wicked event a wicked tip because for people that are that may be a little bit shy it's a really good it's, it's instant I do it all the time yeah imagine yeah. how many people in the room before you go there you've got, you, they know who you are you're like oh yeah you're the person that yeah. messaged me so I like that but yeah so uh, now this is quite hard uh, what you're saying to the misdirection yeah this because for instance like let's say adam adam's in control of the um the mercian building now if you actually put a value on the amount of real estate adam controls uh, yeah it's huge can you imagine what he could put in his <laughs> bio yeah, yeah. right so you know you do have to be careful but yeah the misdirection is hard to say because it's also hard to really verify what someone's doing it's impossible, it's impossible. companies houses oh. yeah, it's because impossible. i could easily say for example you know done 20 million pound this month but that's not deals i've owned or anything i've just i've just transferred money from one place yeah, to the of course other. you could yeah Do you know and I mean? to get an asset under control i just need to go to chelsea mm -hmm. sign a rent to rent or ealing sign a rent to rent on a two million pound house which a lot of them are chelsea's obviously way more yeah and now instantly i've got a two million portfolio but i've signed a piece of paper and I've done it in about a few weeks. So, so you're big on mean? you're big on branding then, and all people doing that is brand, isn't it? I suppose that is the way. They're oh, they're doing brand it for brand. Yeah, just like you know, companies who cut their plastic by like two percent will say we're eco friendly, eco -friendly and when it's low yeah. fat. When it versus McDonald's, they say always oh, low fat. It's not yeah. fucking low fat. Or, or the Starbucks um, cups, the yeah. the plastic cup with a paper straw. Yeah, that makes that no makes sense. loads of sense. <laughs> with a paper straw, it's wrapped in paper as well. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 there. You've got <laughs> a cup. There. You've got a cup. Hold on, but right, a cup. It's gone well. With a straw. Yes, yes. Right. It's like a ninety ten ratio there. Right. Nine <laughs> nine to one ra ratio of plastic to paper. Indeed. But Starbucks are doing their thing there for climate change. So yeah. And it's wrapped I prefer in paper. pasta straws. Have you hear pasta straws? No, I get the cookie straws. <laughs> I prefer. I I think what they should do is put in a paper cup Man. and plastic straw because it'll taste better that's a fair point you said it get just, on, just, get on, on just on wax guys Leon is much better than Costas Costas is the worst coffee Leon food is good I bought What's him his first co uh, Leon coffee today yeah, was, did you enjoy it, was, it I think it was really you good it? Yeah. Yep. it was good Leon coffee back was, to yeah. misdirection what Mis people do to avoid themselves for example um, you can't do much just uh, look look in the mirror and say <laughs> to yourself okay I don't understand property I don't understand buying businesses I don't understand this but in my head do and Google average time to buy a house. You know, use some Googling. I right? will have Google. Use some chat GPT. Say to yourself in the mirror, do I think this is possible? Like, 
could it really be possible? Because if it is, why aren't my friends doing it? Why aren't my family doing it? Like, like put some realism on it. Like, look, yes, you know, I could send out 10 emails and I could buy a million pound business. I could. Mm. And people have in your group, right? Yeah. yeah. But the chances are I've sent out 60, uh, you know, 7,000 emails and 60 got back. And I'm kind of getting there. Yeah. That's the reality. So just be realistic. Speak to someone like us who shows the ups and downs. Even people who say, oh, I show the bad times. No, you don't. <laughs> still select what you're going to show. Of course you fucking uh, select it. Yeah. Also, also like, if you're going to put up your best win as the norm, <clears throat> like you're just setting yourself up to fail because you will under deliver 100% and mentally you'll fuck yourself up because you'll be like that's my level that's my level and you, you keep trying to fake to get to that level yeah. And like, yeah Some, th sometimes you get a little bit more lucky than others but if your best win is the thing that you're going to be pushing then yeah all of a sudden it's, it, it's very it's very very hard to verify almost impossible right um, I would just one thing I've, and I've noticed this recently because I've asked a few questions on various people's posts in property and other stuff I've seen yeah yeah you, you know, you're following me and because you know I'm causing trouble and if they say something like oh yeah you know um, yeah don't worry on that 100 grand thing we can get you an interest rate of like 2% you'll just pay like 400 quid a month no problem and you comment saying okay but what's the deposit what's the maintenance cost what's this you don't get a response okay you're misdirecting because the costs are the costs so yeah. tell me them but you're trying to sell a product same with property oh 300 you know went from being minus 50k in debt and now 400k on the screen sorry what does 400k mean when there's no answer mm. there's your fucking you know verification uh, whilst right. we're whilst we're doing this deal sources just listen up um if you're when, when you're sending out your deal sourcing packs i get sent these to analyze and make sure the numbers work when you're doing your calculations, if you're not factoring in your deal sourcing fee on the return Ooh, on cash employed, debatable the deal it doesn't work. As in, yeah. I don't care how much you charge, the fee is the fee. I think that's fair, right? But if you're calling it a unicorn deal, it's an infinity return on investment, but that's not factoring in the cost of entry. I don't see how that's 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 ethical. But Shaz, imagine you bought it without the, the sourcing fee, then obviously that's what the deal would be, Shaz. Yeah, Duh. I suppose, I suppose. No, I don't. I don't agree, <laughs> I don't agree with it at all. Just yeah. pay the fee. This is down to misdirection. I actually thought it was ironic that we went on to ESG with misdirection, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, no, I agree. Greenwash. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greenwash yeah. Uh, but no, I think that. Who's Tristan? Who's Andrew? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm Daniel G. Right. <laughs> yeah. D, we were talking earlier on the train be in between your phone calls. <laughs> Honestly, every time I've been with this guy, always on a phone call. You were sitting in first class, weren't you, boys? We were yeah, in first yeah. class, yeah. 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 boys have made it. <laughs> we didn't even pay for the upgrade. Yeah. They, they, oh, so you're criminals. No, the conductor was no, too they, busy. They let us do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so D, um, yeah. only because I know you've done this. I know you've done this as well in the past. Um, but some people I would struggle with doing it is when you are, say, working on deals and you're working with professionals, brokers, estate agents, solicitors, at what point would you basically sack them off if they're not doing the job? As in, how how many chances would you give someone or what kind of relationship, you know, is it relationships versus your business? Where would that stand? I, I think it depends on the situation. Okay. But because some people, they can't get something right. Well, not can't, but it's hard to get some things right first time and they're going to have to try and, they may have someone in their network that's going to get it done quicker than you trying to find someone else. Mm -hmm. So... I think it's a, it would be a deal by deal basis. If something was done that is like hard to come back from, then I think you just cut your losses quick, as quick as you possibly can, because I've been bad for giving people too many chances. Oh, no. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. time after time, and then it, all it does is just, it just drains you. So yeah, I would say that it depends on the situation, but if it is something that is, you, you can't really come back from, cut your losses quick, move on. Um, hire slowly, fire fast is what I say. Um, I agree with D in the most part, but I think it's interesting to, when you start the relationship, to almost ask, and it's easier with brokers than it is with solicitors because they just say, oh, it takes as long as it takes, and blah, blah, blah. Like to just un to understand the relationship, right? So I know my, my guy, Stuart at PCS, he owns the phone, he's got 25 years experience. He's not gonna to reply to me straight away, but when he like when he replies, it will be substantial. And he does reply very quickly given his position in the business and what he's working on and given I'm working on tiny shit compared. Mm -hmm. But I understand that. So I, I don't expect there to be something, but when shit hits the fan and when needed, he's there. So I think for me, I sort of slowly understood that. And whereas some people might say, you know what, Tej, how are you dealing with that? Or like, oh, that's not acceptable. I'd say actually it is, because it go, kind of goes both ways in a sense. So. I accept that standard with you. I'm on calls with mentees and I'm like, 
Oh, let me ask Shaz this. You're confusing me, man. Send me a WhatsApp or a voice note. Yeah. If you send him a voice note while I'm and you respond oh, like, and I'm like, rapid. he's read it. I'm like, he's responding. Fuck, I'm like, <laughs> it's just so quick. Right, it's incredible. Um, and that wouldn't happen to anyone else. Mm-hmm any other broker or any other professional so i think understanding that relationship from the start is key like i'm working with um, ronald fletcher fletcher baker right now it's a litigation i think is that is that because be you want well. to be there yeah, the events? unfortunately I am yeah, too. yeah um well their event at the natural history museum wow very fancy the food was um the same caterers as my wedding whole Amazing. type of catering it basically was an indian wedding it was an indian wedding rfb i love you guys please invite me to your next event thanks shaz would be quite dave's the plug she's a, she, she's uh, a big i was a plus she. five after five other yeah. people got invited no she did ask me i just was busy you were gonna come. Yes, I was. I'm surprised she didn't ask you. Are you in Dubai or Atlanta? Or <laughs> metaverse. <something? laughs> yeah, in the metaverse with Sandy in it, mm-hmm. <laughs> with your headsets on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think with them, they're responding super quick. They have been for oh, me. Like, wow. Surprise. But then, right? are you Very dealing with quick. the like? You know, are you dealing with the partners or just not? I say just. Yeah, big boss, big boss, big yeah. boss. Partners. But I mean, they 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 even busier. They should be responding slower. Yeah. But the level of quality, the level of response getting from them and i think our brands play into it we can yeah, we can debate that but for them like now they're setting expectation right so if that changes or it's not that way on other deals then you have to consider something yeah. that's Amazing. a really good point i yeah. think that if you so basically i think what you're saying is to manage expectations up front and yes. then you won't be disappointed yeah how, how often yeah. Are, you, are we going to be communicating how you know what, how do you want to be taught communicating yes Roughly, what's the SLA? If you're off, who's your second in command? Yep, All this yep. sort of stuff. Yeah. Your response times, though, I expectations know. are super. If, if, yeah. <laughs> like, if I ever need something from you, Shaz, I'm expecting a rapid a because you've you, you set that up for yourself. Bad boundaries. Yeah. Bad boundaries. Very, very Ted, high you touched bar. on something there, and I think actually it's a very, very valid point to talk about is building up your brand so you have some clout. I know, and again, you know, Ted, you know me. I'm, I'm very soft here. I'm not that person, but I know that when I've had things go wrong with deals, for example, with lenders. LinkedIn, straight straight on LinkedIn with a, with a passive aggressive post about a situation. And I was telling D, I get phone calls then an hour later going, oh, we'll sort this out for you. Can you just get rid of that post? Mm-hmm. Because you have to, you have to have a voice that's big enough and a reputation that's uh, authentic and genuine enough that people take note. Like when people, well, when I meet brokers in London and they find out I'm a small firm in South Wales with three members of staff, like, oh really, we thought you were much bigger because of the voice I've got an authority essentially as a thought leader, I've been called that, in the, in the finance industry. So I think there's definitely a lot of value to be had in building a brand purely just to be able to have some clout. Thoughts? Um, uh, One million percent. Discounts. I got discounts on my honeymoon. I've had discounts on every single professional I've worked Asli with. Asli Adda? Uh, no, a brand Tilda Rice. Tilda Hold Tilda. Rice, Tilda. Still waiting for the full promo. I have a couple mm-hmm. bags I could do with some more. Um, elephant Adda. I don't use yeah. Asli Adda. Elephant Adda, sorry. Um, it works. It works when I'm complaining about stuff. It works when... I had a business owner for going back and forth. I think he got memory loss. He goes, so can you t- email me? Here's the NDA. What's the next steps? That's three years management accounts on the phone. Can you tell me about yourself and your business and your operation? I said, brother. I literally said, I said, first name. He said, get over. He's like, brother. I said, brother. I said, we spoke about this last week. And he goes, oh, a link. So I sent him like 70 links. Companies have every fucking link I could send him. And he goes, oh yeah, cool. Let's, let's, we're keen to proceed. I was like, send the management accounts then yeah. no. so like but having the brand because some of that was Ted's talks meant that they said oh he's real and I've had business owners for example be like mm, who are you or kind of pull it up and be like oh you, mm. and, and you know what I mean so it, for me I've made money I've saved money I've made contacts I continue to make contacts uh, you know like the decking at our house big uh, hold tight Kyler AP he did the decking for free in return for mentorship because of the brand. So there's so many mm. things that I get from the brand that it, it's just it, it's massive, you know? Okay, and your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Uh, for, for me, I, I've never really, I don't realize sometimes the power of brand yep. until you, you just see it for yourself. So for me, I didn't realize how big of a reach you could get on social media either. So I first noticed it in, we did an event, if you remember in, the little break when we opened up in COVID. Um, <laughs> a variant, the shit. Well, food. listen, Boris has done his thing now. We, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, had, no, we had a massive event. We, we, we had a huge event. <laughs> we had a massive yeah. event. It was yeah. fucking humongous. Yeah. Um, in, I think it was Varanasi. Varanasi. Food shit though, people don't go there. Oh, yeah. I'm not Terrible. picking you up. Gavali is the one. Gavali in Birmingham, okay. thank you. Right, okay, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, as in Varanasi, um, we did it with Zoom Properties and I when I turned up, it was a bit weird when people were like, I felt like people was like, 
oh, this is cool, you know, deed. And I, it was weird for me because like, I know I try and keep, keep, keep humble, but it felt like people was, was cool. Like, to Welcome be, to my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so I know, One I, I sort of noticed it then. And then as time goes on, you realize, oh, the brand, you have, the brand is powerful. Um, I tried to, I've never really tried to use it. Like I think I should the way you do it, but like to be like, look, I have a brand, you know, I want good service. I think I should probably use it more like that, but I've more, I think it's more of a case of just the authenticity and credibility I've used it for more than anything, where if people are a bit unsure of you, you can be like, just go online. Um, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or really, I feel I try and let the brand speak for itself or content speak for itself. Where yeah. they meet you, they already know a lot about you. I think that's probably for me, but I think I do need to leverage it more in the way you do. do how about, you know, when you do your events up and down the country, do you, does 5D, the brand, does that get any recognition or leverage? Like, do you say that we've run these already? Look, you know, you get. So Shara uses that as leverage. Good. So she she does. She, she's Shara's not, the big boss. Yeah, yeah. She's not scared to say, like, look, we've done this, we've done that. <laughs> Whereas, like, I don't know why, but I need to do more. What do you of believe it. in your source, D? Yeah, no, yeah? no, no, it is. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's a bit. I don't like the arrogance. But it's not arrogance because it's, it's fact. Here's an event yeah. we done. Look how sick it was. That's source, yeah. baby. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. Stir it. I need. I need to use it more, definitely. But yeah, I hundred percent. I think brand is really important, and to the point where it was yes, actually yesterday, a business that we bought about six or seven weeks ago. Um, the utilization percentage across the workforce was like 37 mm-hmm. percent and the general manager was telling me that we need to recruit people i was like no i said we need to get people working harder <laughs> so we went back and forth for a couple of weeks and i said look i'm going to come and interview everyone one-to-one in the one location so i went there yesterday spent like four or five hours there interviewing each and every individual person and the first thing they said when i went into the room she went they've all stalked you on social media anyway <laughs> i love that but i was a bit like shit <laughs> like okay what are they gonna expect and then yeah. when we left afterwards a, quite a few of them messaged me well I'll say quite a few out of i think about 17 i had like four messages uh or five actually someone like five messages all saying like look i've been following you anyway really like, it was good to meet you so i realized then that mm. oh actually as much as i was a bit like what have they seen in brand it they've um they actually they like yeah. it so i think brand's really important definitely i think like social media is your shop window whether it's tiktok linkedin instagram so behave accordingly basically right and if you want to build a brand speak to Tej speak to Tej but what I would say is just um, a bit of advice is like be authentic because you can only really fake it so long um, so if you've got yeah but to be fair when people fake it and chat shit and lie and, and put fake numbers and fake cards and stuff they actually make more money than us so no no but then when you see them in person advice, but when you see them in person though and there's a disconnect in, in the energy for example who gives a shit they're, they're happy they're making loads of money crime pays honestly I'm, I'm sick of crime pays crime, it does pay okay. if, if someone takes your car yeah they're gonna make money off it. You're not. True. If someone robs you on the street, you're not really gonna get caught. They're gonna make money off it. If someone has a fake Instagram and they're posing in front of cars, they're gonna make way more money than us telling the truth. But longevity is key, and I don't think. Agreed. I I think that gently gets the Bentley. Gently oh. gets the Bentley. Gently gets the Bentley. Gently gets the Bentley. Gently, gently gets the Bentley. I, I do think that like, you can do that, and you may last twenty four months of yeah, taking yeah. money off people, and you may make a shitload of money doing it, but. Are they going to be here in five years? Are they going to be here in 10 years? How many people do we see come and go very, very quickly? A lot. You know who you are. It does happen because- Hiding behind your mum's sofa. Because, I, and, and that's the one thing. If anyone is out there saying, I'm this, I'm this, I'm, I'm and they're the best at everything, let's see who's here in five years. Yeah, and let's, let's talk <clears throat> actual output. It doesn't matter how hard you work, what's your input off the hard work. Crime pays in the short term, um, yeah. What, I mean, when I say about authenticity though, what I mean specifically is about just as even very very simple now is a posting style so for example if you're not funny don't try and be funny on yeah, yeah. you know if you'll be yourself because i've met so many people when in person the energy is just so different because they're trying to be a persona mm. and when there's that disconnect in energy i've really met pe- i really haven't I have, met man. that many people like that i think um, you're just we, more... we know someone well we we have a mutual th- person that we know who is so dry in real life like she'll go to events and it's like, hi. Oh, same one would be in it. Yeah, no, no, please, Tej. Oh, sorry, not her. No, no, but like we've met people who, and it's events, you're like, hi. And it's just a case of like online, you're so something oh, else. Oh, I know who it is. Yes, I think. Yes. I don't think I know, but. We'll, we'll oh, tell you, we'll God, tell you off air. Okay, okay, but. but because this is not about slagging people off. It's, it's not about slagging people off, no, no. It's just about yeah. have be yourself. Because if you're not, it's just. When and you people will love person, you who you are. Yeah, of course. Even if you're not X, you're not this, you are something, they will love you. Guys, your vibe attracts your tribe. Oh, <laughs> I'm just trying to find my tribe, yeah. yeah. Like. Well, no one's going to be 
you better than you. So yeah. <laughs> just be yourself. And also, like, look, the people, if, if you're going to be yourself, the people that don't like you, oh, well, that's, yeah, you there's a reason yeah, why. selected themselves yeah. out. There's a reason why we were all in, individually different. Like, it is what it is. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I, I think I have definitely met people at events that are completely different to them online have I you literally not, not that like, well, not you that don't many, speak to anyone do you, anyone? I, you can, I can think of two people yeah. that are literally a complete polar opposite of what they are online like literally a completely different and person does it, does it not does it like that moment when you find out they're completely different you just get that energy going oh, like what's going on yeah it is to me it is a I bit can of, see his eyes would just change it is a bit of a downer because for me like, I understand you're going to put your best self online and this is the thing you know people say oh I don't really care about Instagram alright then we'll don't post on there don't have an Instagram <laughs> account it's true like it's true. if you don't care what people think about it, you don't post because at the end of the day if you have if you're not seeking any sort of validation online you don't need to post yep. all of us do it right you post and if you don't get likes it hurts Right, and as much as you like, that's to why think you, you hide the likes. Care, I hide the likes all the time. It, 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 Pro tip, but, but the truth, but the, oh, yeah. you could do that. Yeah. Okay, but <laughs> but no, you just, oh, amateur man. No, do you know what it is though? It's like I think that if if you don't care what people think, you don't need to post. And but it is at the end of the day, unfortunately, social media has us all wrapped up in this little bubble that likes matter, dopamine views hits matter, controlling us, and all this stuff, right? But yeah, I've definitely seen people that um, are completely different in person. But yeah, the, so the Instagram thing for me and the whole social media thing is a little. If bit... you had a choice, would you not? Would you not have your account? I know you kind of it's a necessity now because of the brand. Yeah. So do, do, just until twenty twenty, I only posted when I was on holiday, and I post like once or twice. So the personal account, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't the 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 brand because no, now you are a brand, right? Yeah, because before twenty twenty know that you didn't need to be on social media, that my businesses was on social media, but I promote my business page because a business was more important at the time than a personal brand because yeah. you needed people need to verify you as a business. And if you had no posts as a business or no content, people would be like, what's this? Now I do feel the personal brand is way more important than a business brand mm. because the personal brand, if you put it at ne- attached to your business, then it helps your business more. Yes. So I only started on social media because of Ravi Vicaria. Ravi Vicaria mm. said to me, look, you want to raise money, you're going out there, but we was raising money without being on social media. So I thought I don't really need to be on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, tell people what you do. That's when I started posting on social. Before that, if you look back at my social media and scroll all the way back, you'll just see my normal life before. Have you kept those posts up there, have you? Yeah, yeah, some of them. So I've, I've, mm, some of them I took creep. down. But if you go back, I, I kept them up. The main reason is, is because I've been in business for like 19 years, right? Like since I was left school. If, if you want an account, I, had, I actually set something up before when I was in um, like year 10, but... You know, it was like well, a, Elon Musk. It was like a little yeah. gardening business, right? But yeah. I, it was for OAPs. I used to trim the hedges, do their lawns. <laughs> nice. and I used to get paid a tenner. And when I was fourteen, I used to make a tenner in like fifteen minutes. I was like, "Yes, it's good." So <laughs> hourly uh, rate of forty quid. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So, um, yeah. So I've been in business a long time. So I, the reason why I kept it up because I think social media. I think I had Instagram in like two thousand thirteen. So I want to keep some stuff up because I wanted to show people that, like, look, I've been doing this for a long time and i've made and you know i've had a lot of ups and downs mm. but i've managed to get some success a long time ago and i want people people to see it because it's like i haven't just all of a sudden had a bounce back loan in 2020 <laughs> and started living life yeah. like that's not how i've done this right <laughs> so i wanted people to see like so i always say like if you scroll back through someone's instagram you'll start to see when their life changed mm. and that doesn't it doesn't matter if it changed nine months ago but you will see a difference in someone's life if they've found success and you'll see when it happened. And and whether that matters to you or not, I just wanted to show people that look, like, look, I've, I've done okay before. There's been ups and downs since. And there's been times in the last five years where I'm like, wow, how, how has this not worked? And, 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 you know, I felt, you know, I had, you've had, I've had, you always consistently have failures, but I do feel that social media will tell you a lot yeah. as well as on the fake side, it can people can have pull the wool over your eyes, but also consistency and that five year thing. Scroll back in people's social media and see how they was. I'm living. gonna check his page now. Well, after this, I think. Obviously, I'm saying it because you can look back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ted, anything you wanted to cover today? Get off your chest. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, the, no. pri- the price of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, actually, yes, it, it has gone up. But the price at Zara. Now, I don't shop in Zara. Everything's long leg. Like. But then get longer legs, man. <laughs> you're young enough. Yeah, the, the pro- clothes in Zara, like, have seriously gone up, dude. Yeah. I know you're beyond Zara now. You're doing your little designer boutiques. But yeah. I went in there yesterday because obviously, you know, 
I tend to shop twice a year. There's our I'm so sorry. Is this no chat? Not anymore. There's no way. <laughs> I, I see him in new. Every single time I see him, is something. I buy in bulk in it. Yeah. And I went yesterday, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Some of the <laughs> but did you still buy are, something? No, I didn't. Ooh, okay. Because I, yeah, I need a statement piece for Harvey's event. Like, but I, I just can't really find statement it. Statement piece. It's not the Met Gala. It's the wrong <laughs> time though, because you got the autumn winter drop in. So yeah. the price is going to go up for autumn winter because it's new. So you're looking at the previous yeah. season the yeah. sale so that that's not going to really run for the next sport i know but see i don't follow trends i set them oh, wow. so if i'm wearing it it's not about time it's wow. about time less oh, so what are you planning to wear what's going to be your statement let him keep talking this is a real <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's time> less. <laughs> well I'm, I'm thinking i'm, I'm going to bring my beige flares back Oof. the ones that steve hamilton the, the loves ridge, the rich fit the ridge fit yeah um with some type of trainer i'm not sure yet okay crispy white something white ankle socks get the moisturized ankles out and then i'm thinking like a blue top to match the blue stripe on it and i either want a beige blazer so it's like a beige flary suit interesting or a white top with i just need something up top to be just a bit more impact because everyone's going to come like like, like like a mortgage broker like a mortgage broker starter yeah, kit so yeah, i want to yeah. kind of just bring a bit more <laughs> joie de vivre cool you know okay just just Blue so suit, watch belt, this space shoes, basically yeah watch what, this space yeah watch this space yeah because i'm coming and then obviously we've got savoy's i'm just gonna buy a suit for that because yeah. it's well, um sorry go on. Sorry, one question on this right Wait please a, beige flares with white ankle socks yeah what are you saying i'm just wondering what, what would adam rana do because well, the shoes are going to be white as well so the the plane is matched right but how, level. how, how the <laughs> oh it's it, so the oh you won't even see my socks. So what what whilst I'm asking what's with the white angle socks? Because see when I sit down and cross the leg, yeah, got to give the uncles a little flash. Right, with the okay. uncles as well. We're not Canary Wharf, man. In Canary no, Wharf. Give them a bit of the uncle. Okay. You know what I'm saying a bit of the caramel ankle. Okay. I moisturised it. They might as well look. Okay. Think of all that effort to be okay. hidden. You know what I'm saying? Fine. fine. I might wear long socks. See what the temperature's saying. Can know? I ask? Is this genuinely what you want the, to get off your chest? Yeah. Come on. Um, you okay. got, I know you got something. I, know, so, like, <laughs> I was listening to Hormozzi and Alex, not Alex, Chris, the guy from X Love Island. Yes, he's in. really good. Really interesting. Chris Will. Really interesting. Chris, Will? Chris, Chris Williamson, something like that. He's like the English Tim Ferriss. He thinks he's and he looks like him as well. You not heard of him? I think you'll like him because he's very. What's, what's um, it called? Mindset Warrior? No. no uh, Modern Wisdom. Modern Wisdom. You'd like him because yeah. he, he, he agrees with like a lot of stuff you say, um, a lot of your kind of views, and he just says it. But like, there was one quote which is. Um, it's from him i'm sure he's taken it from somewhere he said what they support you on the way up because you represent their dreams and what they want to do and you're kind of relatable but then when you get to the top when you've made it they then try and tear you down and bring you back because at that point you're a reminder mm. of what they didn't achieve you're a reminder of their failure it's deep it is deep i mean i guess in the real world though have you have you felt that from from no, I actually I was haven't. Gonna say, I don't think you have, have because you? maybe public, maybe like publicly and behind closed doors, people are doing that and kind of being like, oh, he used to be this, used to be this, or I get less engagement, or you know, from certain people or certain things. But like friends and network, no way, because we're all in such good mm. circles that no one would do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they did, they'd be out in like yeah. next day. I yeah. think we kept quite a tight circle for a long time. I was saying to Tej that um, Shaz always adds new people to. It. I like it though. It's good. I was saying yeah, to Tej yeah, yeah. that like you know this is kind of the mixed grill food group. Like we started. Oh, you, off you started this off. To be fair, you were doing mixed grills in Midlands before I did. Okay, okay, but I, I didn't know. I was waiting. I was waiting. I was, time, I was, waiting. I was never invited. To Listen, them, I always get credit where credit's due. But the first time you guys met was in was in the Cardiff mixed grill. Yeah, you you, you put that together. I wasn't sent though. Was that no, no, it was in Mitchie, yeah. yeah. And then you saw Dean. And he was like, Shaz, who's that handsome Asian guy? He's like, he's not Asian, <laughs> yeah. but less of the Asian, definitely handsome. Like, I, just, I think I just moaned. Pork, he doesn't drink. He I just think I just think I just moaned to Tej about yeah. Yeah. everything that I had going yeah. on. I was <laughs> like, yeah. And then we went Sen after one of the PPNs. Oh, hold tight, Sen barbecue, uncle man, smile a bit, innit? You're making money. Your food's good. Yeah, listen, that uncle, Sen bakery uncle. You know what he does? That guy does not care about money. So what he does when it's summer holidays or any holidays, he just closes the shop and goes for three weeks, four weeks. He's like, I'd rather do that than have someone in there and we're in the ruin of the place. There we go, because he's enjoying life. He's enjoying he, life. He's doing what he enjoys. He's, he's, like, he's like, brother, I don't chase the money. He's like, I got enough money. I just want to you know, go and hold it with my family. If you want work-life balance, go and speak to people in Spain and places like that. That's what you're going to do. You want to go and find work-life balance, go to those places, right? And I speak to them because they, they've got it worked out. They're all happy, mm -hmm. not one, but most people are happy. <laughs> they enjoy themselves. They go to sleep in the afternoon. They take time off. The if you want happiness, go find somewhere that's sunny. Have no. you, um, speaking of sunny places, have you heard the Fisherman's Parable? 
No, no please enlighten us. Okay, I'm going to try to remember this. Okay, so Mexican fishermen, this is an American story, so it's on the border, obviously, this is close to it. Uh, Mexican fisherman fishing. American city boy comes over, hey, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just fishing, isn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know how to say fishing in um, Spanish, but he's looking for fish. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, like, so like, how, how, you know, how many fish do you catch? And he goes, you know, enough to feed my family. You know, and he goes, oh, okay, well, hmm, what if you caught more fish? He's like, but for what? I don't need it. He's like, because you could then okay you're doing three fish for your family why don't you catch 10 and we can sell this at the market and then when you get that you then come back mm. you then have another boat you hire another staff and he's like for what is that uh, because then you're going to have another four boats and then you have another four staff and then he's like for what and he's like because then you've been making a million pounds a year you gonna have all these fishes in the world and the mexican fisherman goes to the city boy okay so once i've done all that like then what and he goes then you can retire chill and go fishing in a little village in mexico <laughs> <laughs> i love that i've heard that right? that's, that's yeah. right yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. you're like wait a minute are we not all doing this <laughs> <It's> already <yeah. laughs> like because and also and maybe you two should think about this you right now both have achieved goals that you once said would make you happy 100 percent. so why aren't we all i mean i think we are but i'm like, happy man most people out there yeah. most entrepreneurs have achieved something they said when I get this, I will be. If X, then Y. But it's not. It's now is this. They get restless. Yeah. They get no, restless. No, more, also, more, more. Do you know what is? Is because the the first milestone that people think that they want is never the milestone they wanted. That's the problem. So you get like most people is like, oh, I know I want to make ten grand a month. When I make ten grand a month, I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. I'm gonna go and do this. And then they get ten grand a month and realize this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I now need twenty or yeah. I need fifty. So the if you're ambitious, the thing is the bar will always get raised. And then it goes back to this work-life balance thing is, do you then concede on something and accommodate something that you don't really want to try and find balance? So like I've, I've been told myself, why don't you start going down the pub with the boys or go and watch the football with the boys? I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. drink, I hate the pub, <laughs> right? So why am I gonna get taken away from my desk doing something that I enjoy to go and do something that I don't enjoy to try and find this thing that you call balance. I love it. No, yeah. I'm, I'm similar in the sense of I don't go to shisha bars. I don't like football. I don't like, you know, like watching stuff on TV really. So why would I want to do that and not sit, sit instead of like planning content, planning the day for the week for the next week. And I think, I mean, to be fair, my friends are great in terms of people who I've grown up with. They mm. get it. But the amount of times I have to say no on WhatsApp to say, no, I'm, I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, we know. <laughs> So. I just don't even respond in the group. I just mute them. But um, I think what's speaking on balance, like, you know, you said we're restless entrepreneurs, just keep going. I think there's something to be said for when we can find the point. And you know, when I said I've retired a couple of times. It's because I reached that point where I was like, yeah, cool. I'm good. But was, that, was that financial me. or was that just f- financial, financial backing or stability is what allowed it to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I've now reached that target. It's, you know, it's just, yeah, it's cool. Everything's covered, everything's chilled. I'm going to chill for a bit and then I'll get back into it. And then, but like for me, I don't see it as like, you know, like with certain entrepreneurs, it's always 10x, 10x, 10x. And it's kind of, when do you stop when you're dead? Yeah. I see it as I'm going to, I'm going to jump quickly. I'm going to grow. Mm. Then I'm going to chill. I'm going to retire. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to take mm. it easy. I'm going to, and then if I want more, I'll get more. You know, when I presented the cleaning business to the 5D group, I said, the only thing that will stop me getting this to a million pounds turnover is if I don't feel like it. And that doesn't mean if I don't feel like getting up or working, it just means like if I wake up and say, we're now at half a mil, the F12 is on the drive, mm. I'm good. Mm. I'm just gonna stop, like, I'm just gonna stop because yeah. nothing is compelling me to make more money if I have more than enough to be happy but it's compelling me to travel more or chill with you guys or eat or like experiences experience stuff so i'm very weighted to that side i'm going to be watching your social media quite eagerly more than normal uh Ooh, because i think oh saf cleaning your cleaning brand yep. is a business brand not a personal brand yes so it'd be, yeah. it'd be very interesting how far you can get that and how much you can grow that without mm-hmm. your face being everywhere yeah exactly yeah and it's not gonna and that's a challenge that'd be fun it's, it's not going to go as much mm. i know it's not i've accepted that and as I've got in the business, for this particular business, commercial, I've realized it's not as important as the domestic. So as I open the domestic side, you'll see the brand slightly change a little bit. And yeah, it it's not the center and it's not gonna be the thing that wins business. It's still a bit old school. It's like very direct sales, telesales. Mm. What it will do is people will say, got a presence, got reviews, you know, they're posting, come into my house and clean and I will charge a premium 
because I have that. So it's a business support function, mm. yeah. not the core like it is now. It's interesting because when, when I had the, the burger restaurant, that was purely business. I would never put my face on it. And it worked really well because I suppose, fortunately, burgers look nice on, on photographs, right? Yeah. So there was no shaz. You look nice on photographs as well. Thank you. Depends if your dad's taken them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's purely business brand, but it'd be interesting if you can scale that. Guys, any last words as we are wrapping up? So also, I think with, with the South Cleaning, I think that technically your leadership, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I think though that, and I, I, I think it was a McKinsey study that said this, that, that leadership needs to grow equal or faster than the business to stay on top of the business. Mm-hmm. So I think that even though your personal brand may not be the defining part of growth in the business because the business will grow at a, a slower growth rate than your personal brand, it's still interlinked because yeah. the personal brand is the leadership of the business. But I do, I do like what you said that it is separated, but I suppose that your personal touches that you put on it also helps yeah. the brand grow as well. One thing I wouldn't mind finishing on yeah. is I think that we're, we're a lot of like, we'll talk about entrepreneurs or anyone that's really ambitious, I suppose, whether you're in employment or you're self-employed. Um, a lot of people think that they need to get this sort of financial intelligence to go to the next level. And talking to business owners almost on a day-to-day basis, a lot of these business owners have grown huge businesses. They lack a lot of financial intelligence mm-hmm. because they've just got probably a driver personality and they just haven't thought about things too much and they just go where they need to get to. So I got my thoughts and we'll talk in a sec, but what do you two think? We'll start with you, Chaz. What's the key driver in being a better person in business or in in your career? I think a lot of it, I think most of it comes down to just first of all, being very, very self-aware. What you're good at, what do you enjoy, yeah. and what, what where's the overlap in that? And do, do that, do that a lot more because you're good at it and you enjoy it. Um, like Ted said earlier, if you're not good at something or you don't enjoy it, outsource it. Mm. So yeah, like you said, a lot of business owners don't do profit and loss accounts. They don't do management, you know, but they have a bookkeeper. They have people doing it for them. You know, people like Richard Branson, for example, he it says himself, he is not the most financially minded person, but look at his businesses. So yeah, figure out what you're good at, what you enjoy, what's the overlap, and just go full force on that. Uh, something I struggle with, empathy and people skills, you may have guessed, um, is is really important because in order to outsource, you need to understand what your member of staff or VA or person is feeling, what they're thinking, what motivates them, how you need to speak to them. If they've done a bad job, how are you gonna tell them that? If they've done a good job, how are you gonna tell them that? So in order for me to just be creative and be the business leader, I need four people around me to be doing the other boring shit I don't want to do. Mm. And the only way they're going to do it is if I have people skills, not if I say, do this now. Oh, yeah. shit, do it again. That's what we're all thinking, let's be real. Mm. But having those people skills and empathy for me is more important than financial literacy and all that stuff. Yes, company could be failing, but if my accountant and me have a good relationship, it ain't going to be failing because mm. he wants it to do well for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think that it's great to understand all that side of it. I think some of the business owners we speak to, the business we're looking to buy, I think that if they understood more the moving parts of their business, they would be able to sell it for more and it'd be a better business. Yeah. Mm. But they've still grown a beast without having the financial IQ. But I think that, yeah, based on what both of you said, emotional IQ is, emotional intelligence is is key. I think personally or in business, I think that, self-awareness if you understand and because it's easy right if, if to look through the lens like let's say you, you you tell me a problem you're having in your life it's easy for us to sit here and go what you need to do is this this and this because you see it clear because it's not you when it's yourself you look for confirmation bias you have yes. a bit of cognitive dissonance on, on on certain beliefs so you don't see things as clear as you should because it's yourself. So I think if you have good self-awareness and you work on that EQ, I think that everything falls into place. People management will fall into place, like you just said, because you're emotionally aware. You don't have to fight somebody and you know you can put your ego to the side. You can listen and you know how to handle the situation yeah. better because you look at it from more of a rational point of view rather than I'm gonna say what I need to say because my belief system is X. Yeah. We got time for a quick fire. Um, Let's go for it. D, pizza or pasta? Pizza. Pizza. Uh, pasta. Bread or pastry? Bread. Bread. Bread, 100% whole yeah. all the time, baby. Uh, oven or hob? 
hop. Oven. Oh, as an Asian, you're gonna say yeah, oven. Don't say oven. What the hell goes in the oven? Everything. No, what, what, what chicken? Kind of you can cook chicken in the oven. You think in Pakistan and Punjab they're using ovens? They're using a hob. Sorry, no, nah, you know, disgraceful. Disgraceful. Tava, tava. <laughs> tava, yeah, on the hob. Yeah. Oh, you guys need to think of something as well. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Homozy or Gary V? Homozy's hench. Yeah, Homozy. Yeah, Homozy right now. College. Yep. Um, uh, Lambos or Ferraris? Ferraris, Lambos, Audis. So, oh, whoa. I said Ferraris, real Italian cars. Lamborghinis or Audis. Lamborghinis I pick look- Ferrari. I pick Lamborghini. I like how it looks. You're a pretty boy. Uh, I just like how things look. Uh, okay, cool. Not uh, not seeing people at network. Not going to network for six months or closing your Instagram account for six months. What would you rather do? <sighs> not not seeing people because Instagram will benefit me more. Sorry. Yeah, same. I've- Say more reach on social media than it is in person. Sandals or shoes? S- depends what what climate we're in. I mean, like sandals. England. Sandals. England, I'd pick shoes, but if I had a choice of where I am, I'd pick sandals. Would they be five D branded sandals? Of Slippers. Course. Yeah. I'd pick nothing if okay. I was on the beach. Okay. <laughs> two more, two, two for, from yourself, and then we'll end up. Okay. So. Um, this, is, this is a very quick fire. <laughs> um, What's your favorite tendon in your body while you're thinking? <laughs> I got, I got, I need, I you know one. Okay, we'll go, I, I want to know your tendon though. Tristan Tate or Andrew Tate? I think Tristan's more handsome. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> Neither, kill me. Really? You... Tristan's better looking, so I'll go yeah, with Yeah, Tristan's him. more handsome, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, favorite sport? You have F- to pick one. F1. Uh, I actually really like NFL. Oh. In a sense of when I watch it, I'm really engrossed in it. You got a big strong man, yeah, fair enough. Favorite motivational speaker? Daniel G, my uh, boy. Daniel Ludlow. Okay. <laughs> Love that. I think that's a perfect way to. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's end it there. <laughs> yeah, let's end it there. Okay. So he's been Tej. I've been Tej. That's been Daniel. Been Daniel. Now I'm Daniel. And I'm Shaz. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace. Cheers, guys.